The Mystery of the Missing Hamburger It was seven on Saturday morning. I was asleep because, well, it was seven on Saturday morning. The phone rang and I wanted to ignore it, but something told me not to. That's something with Mom, who always wakes up before dawn. She was in the den, exercising to a fitness show on TV. Answer that, Juan. I'm just getting a good sweat going, she said. I picked up the phone. The girl on the line sounded upset. She said she needed my help. I jotted down her address in a notebook I keep by the phone and said I'd be there in 20 minutes. When I entered the den, I was dressed, khakis and a striped shirt. Mom was jogging in place as a man on TV said to keep those knees up. She did have a good sweat going, and she was keeping those knees up. I told her I had a case and asked if she'd seen my magnifying glass. Drawer, Mom said between breaths, her legs pumping like a pair of pistons. Do you really use that? I'm a detective, I said, taking the magnifying glass from the drawer. Yes, sweetie, but do you need the magnifying glass? Sometimes, I answered. Plus, it makes me feel authentic, especially since you won't buy me an awesome double-billed hat. Those cost a lot of money, she said, her face red from exercising and the fact that we've had this argument about double-billed hats before. I said I knew, told her to enjoy her workout, and left. I should have had breakfast, but I was eager to get cracking. In my experience, the more time passes, the harder it is to solve a mystery. I despise an unsolved mystery. My client was Veronica Weiss. She lived in an apartment two blocks away. I knocked once on her front door, and she opened it so quickly that my second knock nearly ended with my punching her in the nose. She was as eager as I was to solve this case. Juan Lopez, private detective, I said, and she invited me in. Veronica wore green sweatpants and a green t-shirt. There was also a green bow in her red hair. She looked like a leprechaun, but I didn't say that because it doesn't pay to insult clients. She showed me to the scene of the crime, her living room. So someone stole your hamburger, I said. When did you last see it? Before bed. I put it there, she said, pointing to the side table between a chair and the cage that housed her parrot squawk. It was on that plate, all set for me to eat this morning. There was a note near the empty plate on the side table in green ink. It read, Property of Veronica, and the rest of the paper was covered in green hearts. Green is your favorite color, I said. How'd you know, she asked. I'm a detective, I said. You were going to eat the hamburger this morning? Why not last night? Because cold breakfast burgers are great, she replied. My brother Vinny and I love them. I grabbed my note notebook and examined the plate. I even used my magnifying glass. Where the hamburger had been, there were now only sesame seeds. I took some notes. Sesame seed bun, I asked. Yes, no ketchup, no cheese, no pickles, she said. Cold, plain hamburgers for breakfast. You're a pretty strange bird, Veronica. I said, pretty bird, said Squawk from his cage. I didn't know the bird could talk. It made me jump. Veronica apologized and explained that she'd taught Squawk to speak. What can he say? I asked. Hello and goodbye. And he says, all done after he eats, she explained. But that's the first time he's talked today. I think he's upset about my hamburger, too. He hasn't touched his bird seed. I nodded and asked if her brother was around. He was in his bedroom reading. I followed Veronica down the hall. Is Vinny a suspect, she asked. Everyone is a suspect, I said as she opened the bedroom door. 
Vinny was two years older than me, and he was deaf. When he saw us, he put down his book and feverishly signed at Veronica. She signed back just as quickly. It was clear they were arguing, probably about coming into his room uninvited. When they both cooled off, I asked Veronica to sign some questions to Vinny. Have you seen Veronica's hamburger? I asked. Is it possible that you ate her breakfast hamburger? As Veronica signed, Vinny looked annoyed. He reached down, picked up a plate from the floor next to him. A half-eaten burger sat on it. He signed again. Veronica translated. He says he never eat one of my plain, dry, boring hamburgers. He thinks a breakfast burger needs ketchup, cheese, and pickles like his. Again, Vinny motioned to his burger. I thanked him and we left his room. In the hall, Veronica looked distraught. Can you solve the case? she asked. I think I already have, I said. Come on. We returned to the living room. I examined the bottom of Squawk's cage. Then I looked at the tube of bird feed hanging from its side. I picked up the burger less plate and held it near Squawk. All done, the parrot said loudly, confirming my hunch. There's your culprit, I told Veronica as I put the plate down. Squawk, she asked, stunned. How? The plate was close enough for him to grab the burger with his beak. He hasn't eaten this morning because he's full, and there are sesame seeds on the bottom of his cage, but his feeder only has m milo, millet, sunflower, and safflower. My cousin has a parrot and uses the same feed. Veronica was agog. She's been betrayed by her own bird. She thanked me and asked what she owed me. I told her I couldn't accept her money and that I should be going. I haven't had breakfast yet, I said, and solving mysteries makes me hungry. Then stay and eat here, Veronica said. I'm making breakfast burgers. <laughs>